category for a full season. So last Saturday, Syracuse won 72 to 63 in the final game of the regular season, essentially to force a tie with these two teams at 10 and 10. And because of that game, Syracuse is the eight, Wake is the nine, and here they are again. Andrew Carr and Jesse Edwards get us started. Tommy Morrissey, Mark Schnur, and Ted Valentine on the whistle. And just as we expected, Syracuse dropping back into the patented. We can't even call it a 2-3 zone. It's just the Syracuse zone is what it's known for nationally. And it's stopped on the first possession. Benny Williams and Cam Hildreth getting involved in a little extracurriculars. Yep. And we can see right now a lot on the line here to start off day two in the second round of the ACC tournament. Ted Valentine talks him down. And away come the Orange with the hell ball. And here is the freshman Mintz, who has been just terrific for Coach Behan. Tried to go to Edwards. Carr was there. Bobby Clintman getting the start. Deflected it. Here's Appleby. And he Bouncing off a shoot of Mintz, and he's he fun to watch. Hildreth caught again in the zone, and look at deflection. Carr layup good. Jesse Edwards had five steals in the game on Saturday as you get an opportunity to look at the Syracuse starting lineup. Edwards, who was spectacular in that game. Our, our third member, Andrea Carter, is going to talk to us a little more about that. Here is Mintz. Spins out the foul line jumper. Bobby Clintman, who started now the last four ball games. This freshman from southern Sweden in Malmo, averaging less than five points, about four rebounds through the regular season. But you mentioned Clinton in that starting lineup, a smaller starting lineup when you can take it out the big fellas up front when you take out Matthew Mark. Hildreth right there at the foul line, the ACC. Every coach you talk to says that's where you got to be able to make a catch and score against this zone. And oftentimes you're playing one-on-one -on -one against Jesse Edwards, who's one of the better defenders in the ACC, led the league in block shots. So a great start for Wake Forest early. And we get a whistle and a foul off the ball. And it's going to be on Gerard, Joseph Gerard, 6'1 senior, Glens Falls, New York, his first and the first on the orange. And there is the 77 year old Syracuse alum, Hall of Famer Jim Behan. And Appleby and Wake Forest into the forecourt. Corey, we know about the player at the foul line. It always appears to me the wings are also the triggers against some of this. Well, uh, the reason they're the triggers is because you have to make threes. This young man, David Williams, is up, who is a more capable three-point shooter, unable to knock that one down. But Wake Forest made 10 threes against Syracuse in that game on Saturday. The problem was they shot 39. Carl took it up, went back down. Possession, second held ball in what, three trips? <laughs> And there is Steve Forbes, a native of Lone Tree, Iowa, 57 years of age and 49 wins in his third season in Winston-Salem. Deacons are 18 and 13, lost two straight and four of five coming to Greensboro. Foul off the ball on Edwards. Or no, Benny Williams, 13, not 14. His first second on the orange. I'm interested the adjustments can be pretty quick when you just play what Saturday. Yeah, I mean, exactly Especially when you you know got good looks just unable to knock them down We mentioned 10 of 39 and we talked about Jesse Everett who had five steals in that game On Saturday comes up with the offensive rebound another one of the areas where Syracuse was spectacular Edwards blocked away by Carr 12 to shoot for the orange wait Pretty stingy at the rack. When you talk about really a smaller lineup, which pushes Andrew Carr to the five spot. He hasn't played much there throughout this year, with, of course, Bradford and Marsh taking up the majority of the center minutes for Wake Forest. Seven to shoot, and Gerard a standing three. And a whistling foul underneath. And Hildreth. Hildreth is uh, his first, and it is the first on Wake Forest. Joe Girard and Cameron Hildreth. 
Nothing will be given away in that matchup. It absolutely will not be. You talk about two guys with some toughness. Speaking of tough, yeah. Judah Mintz, tough bucket it's getting into the painted area. Kyle Filipowski deserved to be the ACC rookie of the year, but this guy was tracking him. He absolutely was. And midway through the season, I felt like Judah Mintz was actually ahead, had a stretch where he won three out of four ACC rookies right. of the week. Here's Williamson. Appleby pulls the trigger. And away with it comes Gerard and the orange. Skip into the corner. Bell a three. Got it. Chris Bell's 37 three of the year. He only had a three on Saturday against the Dicks. But he's dangerous from beyond that arc. And one thing I love about Chris Bell, he doesn't turn down any shots. He gets an opportunity. He's going to get it up. Hildreth had it bounce out. Nice rebound by Williams. With Benny Williams showing off his athletic ability. I think he jumped and just waited around in the air for a little while to make sure it was off. Gerard a deep three. One and done. The orange at the offensive end. Wake trying to turn up the volume a little bit. Hildreth, Appleby tried to scoop, and there's a foul on Mintz. That'll be his first. And it'll be three on Wake Forest. So we're underway. Four minutes in. Day two in Greensboro. ESPN's Thank you so much, Wes and Corey. And it is great for me to present today's Worth the Watch, which is brought to you by Principal, and that is the performance of Syracuse center Jesse Edwards. Corey touched on it. I'll be happy to expand. Jesse had a monster game last time out against Wake. 27 points, 20 rebounds. It was the first 20 and 20 performance in regulation for Syracuse since Derek Coleman did it twice in 1990. Head coach for Wake Forest, Steve Forbes, said we did not have an answer for Edwards. He dominated the game. Corey, how does Jesse Edwards get his second 20 and 20 game against Wake Forest today? Well, Dre, he's had great energy early, but one of the things that you've seen is Wake Forest putting an extra body on him on the offensive glass, making sure that they try to keep him off that offensive glass. You mentioned those 20 rebounds. Eight of those were offensive rebounds for Jesse Edwards on Saturday. And, and Corey, you know that our producer, Kim Belton, has always got to throw some quizzes out there. So get your 20 and 20 vision ready. We're going to have some quizzes for you. See if you know your 20 and 20 history in a little bit. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, Joe. I am so glad I'm here. Five so I'm looking Bell. forward to seeing my guy baseline. Judah Miss dropping dimes like that right. once again. The beautiful find. Corey, the interesting wrinkle here early is it feels like Wake's trying to tempo Syracuse, but Syracuse doing a good job holding it off with what they're doing right there. Deflections, especially from Edwards. But again, another steal from Edwards on that possession, but just using his length to cover up that middle. We talked about how important that ACC area is. And on the other end of the floor, of course, Judah Mintz, who loves to attack the paint, getting into that ACC area, and the nice cut by Bell along the baseline defender not looking and we normally see bell doing his damage from beyond the three-point arc nice find for judah mintz for the assist so here's mintz at the line he's 76 percent out of fort washington maryland oak hill uh, i was waiting <laughs> i mean again i, I was waiting for i know you who to i'm say. sitting with here today. okay i'm well aware. making sure yeah i won't call him as good as one of the other Magnificent freshman to you know from Oak Hill to Syracuse. You know about Carmelo? Yeah, yeah, that yeah, guy. Okay, that, that guy. guy. Yeah, yeah, he was the greatest good. freshman, greatest oh. one had done ever in college basketball history, by the way. Now cut the nest down. They honored that team last Saturday, by the way. Hildreth in traffic. Car fighting for it, stripped out of there. Boy, Williams has been a interesting guy around the rim defensively here in this opening half for Coach Bayhunt. Been very active. Only played eight minutes in that game on Saturday. Yep. 0 for 2 from the field. So I believe he got the memo from Coach Bayhunt to be a little more aggressive here tonight. That's Lucas Taylor wearing zero for the Deeks. Appleby baseline. Clintman sets it down. Bobby Clintman. Average eight points, nine rebounds, shot 33% from the floor in his last three ball games. And if you're the Wake Forest Demon Deacons, you better enjoy playing with Tyree Appleby. You may not ever play with a point guard like this again. You're talking about great vision as he showed in that last possession. Edwards, jump pass down low, catch layup, Benny Williams. That was such an intelligent play by Jesse Edwards. He pretty much looked off Tyree Appleby going out for the steal. The easy bucket inside to Williams because of it. 
Orange back in front. Here's Hildreth at the foul line. Lucas Taylor is this young man who's picked up some of the uh, minutes after Monsanto's injury cord against NC State in February. Look at Hildreth fight inside. Slapped out, second chance. Look at Appleby. One pass and the ball got kicked. 20 to shoot on the reset and Appleby, like Mintz, eyes up, looking for the outlet. Attacking the basket once again, Tyree Appleby, and just the hesitation to get Jesse Edwards in the air means that Edwards, the ACC's leading shot blocker, can't try to block that, but Judah Mintz on the other, other end, finding Chris Bell on a nice back cut. Yep, combined six assists on eight field goals here early. In the corner, Clintman sets. Edwards the rebound. WD, you mentioned the injury to Damari Monsanto yep. was huge. Monsanto was averaging 3.2 made three-point field goals, which led the ACC. And that shooting that Wake Forest is lacking right now without him has hurt this team. Williams had it rattle out. Look at Bell fight through. Young freshman from California back to Williams. Benny Williams got five, just his 17th three of the year. And a timeout here. And you can see Steve Forbes not happy about the second chance opportunities for Syracuse. And I'll getting day two underway at the New York Life ACC tournament. It's just the second meeting in ACC tournament play between the Orange and the Deacons. The other one occurred five years ago at Barclays Center in Brooklyn. It was a first round matchup. Mark Dolezal had 20, Tyus Battle 18, Brian Crawford had 22, Beach Hill had 11. But Syracuse won 73-64. Pete Chill being Brandon Childress. I know you knew who it is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tell me about you, else. You know I absolutely am on top of Pete Chill. You know my nephew. I'll I know. make sure that you were. I, oh, I know. I know, right. I know you got it covered. I also like Mark Dolezal getting a shout-out. One of the more That's underrated Mark guys. Mark Dolezal, by the way. For Syracuse, yeah. Five-point lead for the Orange. Kind of getting contributions from everybody but one four right there. It's Jesse Edwards, who had the 27 and 20 on Saturday that Dre just talked about. Here's Bell at the foul line. But you see, Jesse Edwards has developed so much as a player during his time at Syracuse simply for the way he handles the yeah. double team, handles that trap, is able to get the basketball out, oftentimes getting his teammates open shots. Feels like Wake's got to get some perimeter firepower going here, Corey. They absolutely do. And when you consider the fact that there's no Monsanto, yes. ooh, that's a great. Retraction there by Benny Williams getting back to block that shot. He and Bell both attempting to take that away from Marsh, who comes in shooting about 90% from the field. Williams knocks down another three. Eight for Benny Williams. He's got the last eight for Syracuse. Remember we talked about that memo? I believe he got it. Only yeah. eight minutes for him. The Demon Deacon cheerleaders here and of course Wake Forest right now on spring break. So yeah. doesn't have you know the students here in the building that you would expect. But actually bowled with a Wake Forest legend a number of times. One Chris Paul, who uh, is an avid bowler. He's he's big time right there. He would have bowled a strike, especially with the cameras on. I got you. Deeks need to strike here because Syracuse is on a 16 to 4 run since Wake led 4 0. There's Clinton. Williamson sliding baseline, the scoop and score. Davian Williamson started at East Tennessee State for Forbes, transferred when the coach came over via the portal. And now the Deeks only trail six here. And once again, the double team, nice find for Edwards. And we talked about Chris Bell. He ain't going to wait. His second three pointer of the game. And now you think about Bell and Williams combining for four three point field goals made already. If I told you Syracuse had four threes in their first seven field goals and none for Joe Girard, would you be surprised? I mean, think about it. You're getting it from Bell, you're getting it from Benny Williams. And Joe Girard is yet to dial one in from long distance. And Orange playing strong up nine. Again, Williams left it on the front. Appleby races. Watch this. All the way to the rim. Got it blocked from behind by Bell. WD, you talk about three-point shooting for Syracuse. This is a team that only shot two of 14 in the game on Saturday. Yeah. So they brought their shooting with them to Greensboro. They were able to get that win without shooting well from around the arc. Corey, I think one of the most surprising stats for Bayhams team is they only averaged six threes a game. There's Gerard. He got fouled. 
Three fouls coming, or three free throws coming on the foul against Cam Hilgren. We talked about Jesse Edwards and his maturation. As you see Jesse and you get an opportunity to look at his eyes, he's seeing the trap coming and understands exactly where the opening is going to be and has the length to be able to deliver a strike to Bell, who's able to knock down the three ball. Chris Bell doesn't need much time, but Jesse Edwards puts it right on the spot in his shooting pocket, making it easy for his teammates. Tell you what, the improvement year to year for him, unbelievable. Here's the best thing about it. He can come back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's an option hit for Jesse Edwards to come back and be a part of Syracuse program next year. And I'm hoping that he decides to do that. Can I just tell you and Dre something? I think everybody ought to try and come back for one. I just think <laughs> whether they tell you you're up or not, I think you just ought to throw it out there and say, you know what, I'd like to try. Can I come back Look, for one just more? Just bring them all back. That's come a, back I, for one. Why not? Corey, listen, if there was NIL when you played. Oh, oh, definitely would come back. <laughs> oh, Dre, I'll answer. Dre, I would like for you to finish your question. <laughs> Bobby would on the you dunk. have come back, oh. Corey? Dre, let me tell you, when, when I left, I had a year of eligibility remaining at the University of Virginia. But my NIL package with the San Antonio with Spurs was much better than anybody was going to offer at that time. So the answer would have been no. And had I not broken my ankle, I would have taken that NIL, NIL package much earlier. Oh, my goodness. What, what Corey's trying to say is he just wanted a little freedom in his life. He was ready. <laughs> oh, my But I, I, I really do appreciate the fact that these young people are able to get Name, image, and likeness I, money. Sure. I, I love the way that they can. And again, you know, they put in a lot of time. It's a lot of work to be a, a college athlete. And again, I'm glad they're able to be rewarded for it at this point. I would uh, I would tell you that I, I think it's the, the paperwork on the eligibility has been the tricky part. Uh -huh. That's uh, no question about the backside for the student athlete. The paperwork on who's got years left and so forth is the I think that's the tough part. And the recruiting piece of developing programs, too, Corey. Here's Gerard. Now Bell. Orange up nine. Look at this. Chris Bell. Nope. But I like the I like the thought process. When all else fails, shoot it. Make sure you get a look at the rim. Don't turn the basketball over. And at the end of the day, you allow your defense to get back and get set. Wake Forest got five from Clintman, the dunk and the foul a moment ago. And Bobby Clintman, who had eight points and nine rebounds in the last three starts, looking again. Wow. He had three double figure games against the ACC. He's got eight to lead Wake. He's got half the deep points. And he's stepping it up. And of course, part of that trap against Jesse Edwards, an aggressive trap on this possession, but Edwards still is able to get it out. Judah Mintz missing Chris Bell on that one. Ends up being a turnover for Jesse Edwards. Yep. Trying to set that screen. Second foul on Edwards. Five on the orange. And substitutions. Edwards going to get a seat. Penny Williams will check into the ball game. So now Gerard. And we see Malik Brown too, Corey. Yeah, I like this time the freshman from Culpeper, Virginia, is taking the floor. But I like this lineup from, from Coach Behan. He's got really three forwards in there now inside on that back line of the zone. And Malik Brown can cover a lot of ground and be a menace defensively in there as well. Appleby sliding through, kick out for Taylor's three. High arcing triple. Lucas Taylor's eighth three of the year and his first points in the ACC tournament. It's a 9 nothing run. For Forbes' Deacons to pull to within three. Seven and a half to go. Gerard still without a point. All right. So a break in the action. Syracuse by a Woolworth store, which is now an international civil rights center and museum. Wes and Dre is somebody that was born here and grew up uh, at least till I was what 12, I think, Corey, before we moved to, to the Raleigh area. Uh, it's something you learned about in this marketplace in, in the 1970s. I was an elementary school student here. Dr. Pauline Foster was our principal at the elementary school. 
and it was part of the North Carolina history you learned as an elementary school student. The actions of, you know, people like Joseph McNeil and Franklin McCain and Ezell Blair and David Richmond. And it went from February 1960 into July, nonviolent protest into the whites only lunch counter at the Woolworth store in downtown Greensboro. And that's, you know, a lot of respect won from the fact that you were taught that in elementary school here because, of course, black history is U.S. history. Mm. Bell, the rebound of a miss. It's a one point Syracuse lead. And here's the trick with Forbes's team they've kind of knocked off little bits here. Not necessarily solving, they're solving the zone court, but it feels like Syracuse, for all that they did early, now finds themselves in a one possession run here with six and change to go. When Syracuse hasn't taken care of the basketball, a tough shot right there from Joe Girard is able to knock that down. His first bucket on the afternoon. But if you're Steve Forbes, you'll live with Joe Girard having to make shots like that to beat you. Bobby Clintman has got a double double. And getting up, well, tried to go for more, and the lob was offline. And that was on Lucas Taylor, who tried to hit Clintman on the backside lob. So Girardi gets his first field goal. Got six the hard way, three free throws and a triple. And now a hell ball, our third in the first half. And that'll bring Edwards into the ball game and Kadir Copeland. Great hands by Wake Forest. Multiple players. When you think about Lucas Taylor as well as Andrew Carr getting in there, getting their hands on the basketball, not allowing Gerard to get that look, but also not picking up the foul. Yep. Baseline Gerard. Here's Mitz, the hanging two. Oh, look at Copeland, the freshman from Philly, try to fight for a second chance. Appleby at his best in transition, and Williamson can't find the three. Carr recovers against Edwards. Rolled out. Look at Clintman. I think he's going to get called for the foul in pursuit of the uh, second chance. Oh, no, it's on Syracuse. Quick reminder to you, our Nothing But Net crew comes back tonight on ACC Network, 11.30 Eastern time. They'll break down all four second-round games of this New York Life ACC tournament, post-game interviews, look ahead to tomorrow's quarterfinals, and usually a surprise or two stops by late at night when it's Nothing But Net after dark. Absolutely, and again, of course, you've got Kelsey Riggs, Luke Hancock, Joel Berry, and the great Carlos Boozer yep. on the set. Uh-oh. Oh, I thought Copeland was going to get up on me, but he found the right guy. Great look for Benny Williams, who's knocked down one from that spot already. Rolled out for Williams. And Tommy Morrissey three, is. Three, three, Judah and Judah Mintz draws the foul of collision with Tyree Appleby. It'll be the second on Mintz, six now on the orange. And now you look at the Syracuse lineup. Syracuse Although they hold a four ten. point lead, Sunday you've got Jesse Williams. Edwards and Judah Mintz. Both on the bench with the two fouls. Mm. Most likely we won't see them again. And you look at the game of runs that we've seen. Syracuse opened the game with a 22-10 run, but just like that, Wake Forest gets right back into it with an 11-3 run of their own. Hildreth on the drive. Edwards slapped it away. Well, I didn't think we would see Edwards, but he's back on the floor with the two fouls. Yeah. <laughs> so Jim Beheim not scared to use Jesse Edwards. He got some mileage out of the two forwards, though, didn't he? He really did. Got great minutes out of those guys. And, of course, Benny Williams off to a good start in this one offensively. Sonier Torrance is also on the floor, Corey. First time we've seen Torrance transfer from Marquette, who's a Syracuse native. Gerard four to shoot in traffic, forced it up. And we get a travel on Joe Gerard. Whistled by Ted Valentine. Four and a half to go. Wake has done this, Corey. One three. Bobby Clinton. And look Clinton. at this. The pass was in the right spot, and Clinton is going to pick up the foul. Chasing the offensive rebound. Clinton has got to be careful on that one, though. A little demonstrative. I understand you don't agree with the call, but. Make sure you don't add any insult to it. Trey? Just had to appreciate the defense, Corey. I know you're more of an offensive guy, but the defense from Cameron Hildreth 
the denial first and then the slides. Like, this isn't an easy thing to do. Hand up because you don't want to go hand down, man down. Then you cut the driver off. A little defense when the offense is struggling. You know, Dre, just because you were a great defender, yes, and I was a scoring point guard, doesn't mean I didn't play defense, Dre. I didn't say you didn't play it. I just don't know if you appreciate it. I don't know if you appreciate it. I would go as far as to say, Dre, that I probably don't appreciate it as much as you do. Wow. However, I can respect you. The defensive effort uh, by Cam Hildreth for that possession. Can I reemphasize how happy I am to be here today? <laughs> Dre, I am so happy to be with you because somebody is firing right at CA here I mean, today. A, a, that's the way it works. My I little understand. sis, man, she, she comes at me constantly, you know. But again, she she was a defender. That no question. She, she, I mean, she I, was a well lockdown aware. defender. Yep. She's well a aware. pass first point guard, so I, it's yeah. not much I can say when she comes at me like that. Yeah, well. The question is, Corey, who comes to mind when you think of somebody trying to defend you that way? Who, who tried to lock you up like that? I can tell you right now, a guy at Wake Forest, and it would not be Randolph Jones. No, it's not. It would be a gentleman by the name of Derek McQueen. Oh, wait a minute. David Williamson knocking down the three ball. And by the way, where's Corey like Derek McQueen? McQueen? And where's number four, just like Derek McQueen when he put me in jail <laughs> at Lawrence Jones? Ace ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. When you take care of your team, they take care of business. DC had pros. I don't mean one pro, but multiple pros. Speak on it, Seth Greenberg. I can tell you right now, when you talk about ACC point guards, when I was playing, you go back, Wake Forest, of course, had Randolph Childress, even though he wasn't a point guard. We had Randolph Childress, Rusty LaRue. Then you think about Travis Best at Georgia Tech. You go to Sam, Sam Cassell and Charlie Ward at Florida State. Chris Whitney at Clemson. Bobby hey, Hurley bro. at Duke. ACC was point guard you. The entire conference was. And we're not even talking about the big guys up front. Yeah. No, you're right. That's Appleby and Gerard and Judah Mintz along with Davion Williamson have kind of set a little bit of a tone here today, but it's the bigs like Benny Williams and Bobby Clement for Wake Forest that are kind of running this first half. I mean, that's the first time that Jesse Edwards has handled the trap poorly, forcing a shot, but even still with the two defenders on him, Benny Williams had the opportunity to pick up the offensive rebound. Benny Williams leads Syracuse now. He's got 10 in this first half. Clement on the bench with the two fouls. He leads Wake Forest. There's Marsh. Boy. Did he give away a free shot? No, he saw the ACC's leading shot blocker and decided otherwise. Carr working through traffic. Look at Benny Williams fight and ultimately pry it out of there. Samir Torrance in the orange in the front court with a four-point lead and under three to go in the opening half. Copeland went for Torrance, stolen Appleby. Here goes the league's leading scorer on the board. Second field goal for Tyree Appleby from Jacksonville, Arkansas. Tyree Appleby is quick as lightning. He can be in one place at one time, and before you even throw the basketball, he's already there to take it away, which you saw in the defensive possession. Gerard. And the Deeks now a chance to tie or lead as we work toward two to play in the first half. No shot, says Tommy Morrissey. And the foul on Samir Torrance. But you talk about quickness. Just watch how quickly Tyree Appleby steals the basketball and then, of course, turns his defense into offense to change the pace to go right by Gerard and get the easy layup. Only four points for the ACC's leading scorer early. But getting to the free throw line where WD, he set an ACC record single game 23 for 28 free throws yeah. against North Carolina. Front end of the one and one, good for Appleby. Here's a look at our day two bracket from Greensboro. Jeff Cable, the coach of the year, the Pitt Panthers. They're next against Georgia Tech at 2.30. Josh Pastor's team beat Florida State yesterday behind Miles Kelly. And then the night session, North Carolina makes their debut here at the Coliseum with Boston College. And then, of course, the nightcap features Virginia Tech and NC State, who have not played since early January. They had only one game in the regular season. Six for Appleby. 
Tied at 29. Wake on a 19 to 7 run since they were down 12. But Jesse Edwards getting a much deeper post position before the trap could even get there. He was able to go to his jump hook and score right over the top of Mark. Inside two now. Mintz and Gerard kind of play the front here. Williamson a shot fake on a three. Feeds Carr for the dunk. Second field goal for the Delaware transfer, Andrew Carr. Wake Forest has handled, once they've had that gotten the dribble penetration, getting inside the lane, they've had a number of nice inside interior passes, but Judah Mintz answering on the other end. Five first half points now for Mintz on his second field goal. Orange back in front. Marsh trying to help with that screen on Gerard. They skip it for Williamson. Flashes by Mintz. This is who you want the Rock to be with, right? Absolutely. Lucas Taylor getting another look at it, unable to knock that one down. Reach crashed the glass and last touched by Syracuse, says Mark Schnur. Tommy Morrissey, I think Mark Schnur looked for a little help from Tommy Morrissey, but he will stay with the original call that awards it to the Deeks, despite the pleas of the Hall of Fame head coach across the way at the orange bench. <laughs> Wake Forest doing a great job as of late getting inside the painted area. Once again, Taylor gets into the paint, unable to finish it. But Wake will keep the basketball once again. When you're ever able to bring Jesse Edwards up to the ACC, whether you shoot it or drop it down for one of those passes, it take, eliminates a shot blocking ability, getting him away from the rim. Yeah. Look at the lob for Carr, and that time Benny Williams knocked it out. Here's Mintz free wheeling, and a lay it in. Four in a row for Judah Mintz. And the Orange lead is four with under a minute to go first half. Taylor with Appleby and Williamson on the perimeter here. Once again, inside the wow. painted area, Tommy Appleby can get to his spots. Oftentimes, you have to have two defenders there to take him away, and that time going around Jesse Edwards, and once again, eliminating the shot blocker with his quickness. Quiet start for Appleby, but Corey's got eight now as we close this half, and Syracuse is going to take the user lose it timeout with about a two-second differential as we wind down this first half. Two-point lead for the Orange. They're talking about the point guards in this game with Judah Mintz, the freshman phenom for Syracuse, going point A to point B with his quickness and then showing off his quickness, Tyree Appleby, the great ball handling ability to freeze the ACC's leading shot blocker, Jesse Edwards, the finish. WD, Yeah. these two great point guards you're watching. Which one is me? Which one is Dre? Uh... I think Mintz maybe defends a little harder than Appleby, so I would say that Dre is Mintz. So <laughs> always got to go back to defense. My offense was my best defense, WD. Here is Mintz, five to shoot. Foul line jumper. Air ball and shot clock violation, so one and a half to play. Wake's going to take their time. Carr's going to get a five-second call. He better be careful with that. Close, didn't he? Appleby picks it up. Half-court heave at the horn. Spins out. And the orange is going to take a 35-33 lead to the locker room here, Corey. Entertaining first half for both these teams. And we saw them showing off their strength. Tyree Appleby. And the Demon Deacons attacking that paint, getting in a number of nice interior passes and finishes. Here's Dre with Coach Beheim. Coach Beheim, you keep Judah. A part of this first half. The double-double for Clintman. And Jesse Edwards, who had 27 points and 20 rebounds in the ball game on uh, Saturday, limited here in just this uh, first half. Just one solitary field goal for the big man. Hildreth in the Deeks. Cam Stuck, a little up and under, and Cameron Hildreth starts the second half. I will be 100% transparent. I did not think that that was legal in men's college basketball. The re-pivot? Yes. I did not think that was legal, so I'm sure it is because Teddy Valentine was right there on the baseline and did not call it. Yeah. We got, a, we got an A crew now. Tommy Morrissey, Ted Valentine, Mark Schnurl on the whistle. 
Speaking of, Ted Valentine calls the turnover. Dre. Well, guys, what we just saw there, the double team against Jesse Edwards. I talked to Coach Forbes. He said he felt really good about the way his team double teamed Edwards in that first half. He said they have to be conscientious because if he shoots it early, everyone else is crashing. So mm. they've got to box out if Edwards shoots it, and they've got to get out to shooters when he passes out of the double team. But he feels good about his team. Offensively, he likes the ball confidence as well. There's Carr at the ACC logo. Sweet spot against the zone. Third field goal for Andrew Carr. Four in a row for the Deeks to start the second half. Wake leading for the first time, Corey, since it was 6-5 early in the game. Bell trying to put the orange back in front and does. But you notice Wake Forest defensively, even though they're trapping, they're face guarding Joe Girard, not giving him opportunities, <laughs> not recognizing the fact that Chris Bell can be a knockdown shooter from three as well. Chris Bell's got three threes and his fifth double-figure game against the ACC. Clintman took his eye off of it, turned over to Bell and the Orange. Mets a pull up. Edwards crashed the glass. And is Andrew Carr going to get called for this? But that's what makes Jesse Edwards so dangerous. He can always go get a basketball at his highest point and out jump everyone, of course, already at seven feet. Eight offensive rebounds that match up on Saturday. Right. And he continues to be dominant on the glass here as well. Here's a Gerard for Bell. Over the top of Bobby Clinton. And look at Carr and Edwards just kind of hold their spot on the floor. <laughs> But a great piece of officiating not to blow the whistle on that. Both guys were guilty, which means that no one gets the charge. Appleby had it pop in, pop out. Wake Forest ball movement's been pretty good here, Corey. It has been. Syracuse has as well. Nice find. Oh, Vinnie Williams unable to bring that one in, but a great look from Judah Mintz. And started a transition chance that Appleby can't finish. Mintz has numbers. They waited for Appleby to get back into it. Here's Edwards to dunk on Carr and the foul. <laughs> Jesse Edwards running down the floor but staying behind the play, making sure he made himself available to Joe Girard to find a highlight that I think we're going to see on SportsCenter later on tonight. Jesse Edwards to the line, 73%. After Wake got the first four of the half, Syracuse has now put six in a row on the board. So the run game continues here early in the second 20 minutes. Back to a four-point lead for the Cues. Williamson knocks down a triple. It's going to be necessary for Wake Forest to be able to pull Syracuse wings out on that zone, opening up things on that interior. They're going to have to make some threes. Be interesting to see how they play the repost. If Benny Williams cuts down the lane, he would have got a dunk on that possession. Here's Mentz trying to work on Williamson along the baseline it grazed off the side of the glass and here comes Appleby ahead for Hildreth and a layup good in front of the uh, defensive Chris Bell Wake Forest taking the lead playing in transition not and beating the zone down the floor is always going to be important when you play against Syracuse Gerard and a rebound for Carr Hildreth again going to be Hildreth against everybody in white there for a second I thought yeah Syracuse did a great job getting back with that transition defense on that possession Carr at the high post now drives Edwards forced it up and I think Bell is going to get the foul here not Jesse Edwards Mark Schnur. Forrest, and we talked earlier about Syracuse center Jesse Edwards having 27 and 20 last time out against Wake Forest. So my question, guys, Wes, Corey, this is for both of you. How many players can you name that averaged 
20 and 20 in Division One college basketball. So before we start, Dre, you know I know one answer already. So I'm going to give my guy, the historian, the first shot at this, and then I will give the one answer I know. I don't know any more than one. Uh, I will go. Uh, Come on, Wes. Lou Alcindor or Kareem Abdul-Jabbar at UCLA. Okay. I don't know if that's right or not. Uh, we got to go to our super producer, Kim Belton, to find out if that is correct. I would also throw Wilt Chamberlain at Kansas in there, which was my first guess, and I'm not sure if that's correct or not either, but I can tell you one that I know for certain would be the doctor, Julius Irving, that's who a great averaged Dave 20 and 20 at UMass, and the reason why the Julius Irving Award is named, of course, after one of the greatest, and you mentioned a couple of the other greats in that. And Julius Irving, I was correct. However, you were wrong on both of your answers, my guy. Good so, guesses, uh, though, Wes. Good, good guesses. <laughs> well, let me emphasize, we lost Paul Silas back there in the uh, fall. Mm -hmm. A Terrific NBA player, Dre. College numbers in Creighton are absurd for Paul Silas. Artis Gilmore played for a national championship for Joe Williams and the Jacksonville Dolphins with the great Pembroke Burroughs, by the way. Let, let me just explain to you, when you say the name Artis Gilmore, I need you to say it quieter because I still have a traumatic experience from when I shook Artis Gilmore's hand. <laughs> and I think my fingers are still broken. I hear you. I hear you. Three ball out of the corner by Hildreth was missed. Three point lead for Wake Forest. Deacons have kind of been they've run, stop, and I mean from a scoring perspective. They'd score a lot, then stop, and then score again. And Syracuse has also counterpunched a little bit, especially in the uh, early stages of this second half. And now foul on Mike Marsh. Or Matthew Marsh, rather, the sophomore from Cornwall in Southwest England. It is his second of the half, fourth on Wake Forest. And almost five minutes gone here in this second half, a three point lead for the Deacons, and a reset on the Marsh foul. Once again, the double team on Jesse Edwards, who's handled it very well throughout this game, but. Bell had it knocked out. Clintman, I think, dug it out of there. And he'll get the feed from Williamson. And Bobby Clintman cannot finish it. And Ted Valentine, a whistle in the transition chance on Judah Mintz. Second on the orange here in the second half. Couple of free throws coming for the freshman at 6'10", Bobby Clintman. Ten points and the double-double in the first half for... Clinton. No points though, since seven minutes to go in the first half. Goal. Well, give free throw Syracuse good. A lot of credit for adjusting as we see the ACC coach of the year, who also happens to be my little brother, coming through, <laughs> Jeff Capel, well, who is put on in this building as a player. Opportunity now, along with John Shire as well as Hubert Davis to be one of the coaches who have been able to be a participant as a winning team in the ACC tournament to go along with being a winning coach. Edwards on the second chance and the foul. And we'll get free throws here in a moment for Jesse Edwards. Don't forget to check out our alternate angle of today's game. The New York Life Above the Rim Camp is streaming live for you on the ESPN app. Always good to have a second screen going when you're watching March Madness basketball postseason, especially here at the New York Life ACC tournament. There's a look as Edwards goes to the line. He is hit his only free throw here in the second half. We've got two now. We talk about the history of this event. Think about the Capel family and their history in the ACC tournament, of course. Jeff's mom, Jerry, is here. Their late father, Jeff, was just a terrific ambassador for basketball, Corey, as you know, at all levels in this state. Yeah, absolutely. And as at one point, an assistant coach at Wake Forest. That's it. Yep. Edwards got the back end. And there comes Jason Capel. Who has worked this tournament at every angle. Yes, he has. In <laughs> fact, he was sitting at the end line last night. I sent him a text. Go, where's your mic? Uh oh, oh, Bobby Clinton. 
tell you this, the young man from Sweden's having a bit of a coming out party in his first ACC tournament game. Well, and that's been a, a significant adjustment for Steve Forbes and his staff. They have filmed that lob a number of times throughout this game. Hasn't always executed perfectly, but they weren't able to pull this off on Saturday. But they're pulling it off to perfection here in the second round of the ACC tournament. Basketball is brought to you by Principal. When you take care of your team, they take care of business. And we welcome you back to the Coliseum in Greensboro. There's the freshman from Malmo in southern Sweden, Bobby Clintman. Jesse Edwards from Amsterdam in the Netherlands as we continue to make basketball more of a smaller world, don't we? It, 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 <laughs> very small world when you think about where all the basketball players come from and where this game has become so popular after being played globally. Here is Appleby, a look ahead for Hildreth and swiped out of the air. Benny Williams was playing free safety. Now that's one thing that you will find with Tyree Appleby. He ha does have the tendency to turn the basketball over. Had seven turnovers in the game on Saturday. Of course, you love to see him do a little more of this. When he gets the opportunity, knocking down the three and transition to build the good Wake Forest lead to nine. 11 for Appleby. 14 to 1 the run and the miss layup by Mitz. Here goes Appleby again. Williamson standing three. Back to back triples from the Deeks. Not happy as the Hall of Famer. He is not. WD, we talked about the fact that for the Deacons to win this game, they were going to have to be strong from beyond the three point arc with 10 for 39 in the matchup on Saturday at 25.6%. Tonight, they are much better. Tyree App will be finding Davion Williamson for the second of back to back three point field goals. And of course, his teammates along the sideline. Love what they're seeing. The lead for Wake, its largest now of eight. And we keep talking about the the way the ball game's unfolded today. Oh, we absolutely have. We talked about the fact that we've got the runs happening right now. Wake Forest has opened this second half on a 21 to 7 run after seeing Syracuse open the first half on a 22 10 run. So these teams getting after it here. 12 point lead here for Wake Forest. One of four today from Greensboro. And Pittsburgh, who had maybe the toughest Saturday in all of college basketball last week. They had a two-point loss at Miami. Keep them from winning a share of the regular season title and end up being the fifth seed. They take the floor next year at the Coliseum against Georgia Tech. But I can tell you what, I got a chance to hang out with the Panthers yesterday, and they are inspired. They are loose. They are ready to go yep. here this afternoon. Syracuse a miss out of the timeout. Here's Wake Forest on this run. 17 to 1 over about the last four minutes. Foul line for Hildreth. Back out, Clintman tees one up. That one did everything but go down for Clintman, but you like that look if you're Wake Forest, and you're going to get those opportunities. Torrance, wow, look at Williams go get it, and a foul on Bobby Clintman is going to be his third. We talk about the, the Pitt Panthers coming in playing the next game and one of the reasons why this game is so important for Pittsburgh. Did everything but go down for you, Corey. It did everything but go down on that one. And we talk about the Pitt Panthers and the importance of this ACC tournament for them right now. They're on the cusp. According to Joe Lenardi, even right. though they had a great season. Yeah, don't take me there right now. I'm not but they've had a great season, but yet they're on the cusp right now still in the field. Down low. Copeland could not finish. Marsh closed the rebound. Appleby. Hildreth hesitated. Now Williamson, he will not. Oh, and Edwards slapped it, but right back at Williamson, and somehow he kept it for Appleby. Carr put it on the floor and Mark Snow whistle. Simon Torrance his second, Torrance third on the uh, orange. And we see the bracketology with Joe Lenardi, the projected ACC teams right now. Pittsburgh at 11 seed. 
And so an important time here throughout this ACC tournament for the Panthers to continue their strong season. Get a couple wins here in Greensboro. Hilder, 11 to shoot. Marsh, oh, shot. Williams is going down. Marsh also will tumble. And I think that's going to cost Jesse Edwards his third. As long as it's only a third foul, we can appreciate that. Nuts. There's nothing worse as far as a injury standpoint. As you see the nice pump fake by Marsh, Jesse Edwards able to clear Marsh pretty much and brace himself for that fall. Fortunate. One of the things that you never like to see from basketball players, especially falling from those heights, hmm. is putting those wrists down. It's oftentimes the way that you break your wrist. Fortunately, Edwards able to walk away from that one unscathed. Williamson missed the three from the corner. That was 14 feet of human falling right there under that basket. Yeah, it was a lot, a lot of man down there. Kick out three, Williams. Boy, the Orange are getting good looks and just not able to buy one now for yeah. the perimeter. But those are the same shots that went in for Syracuse early. Now they've missed their last 11 shots as they've struggled to find a way to score here, trailing by 12 with 12 remaining. Tim Duncan was the 96 MVP. He had a 2020 game in the championship victory against Bobby Crimmins, Stefan Marbury, and Georgia Tech. Absolutely. You're talking about two of my former teammates, of course. Randolph and I played together in high school. Tim Duncan and I played together with the San Antonio Spurs. So special to see both those guys and the way that they were able to get the job done in the ACC tournament. And of course, you know, the caveat to Randolph is always, if I weren't hurt, it would have never have happened. 12 point. 12-point lead, whistle and a foul, and let's go to Dre. Well, Wes, when you talk about the history of this tournament and the history of men's college basketball in general, Roger Ayers, who is a referee, he is a staple when it comes to this game. And you see the referees, they're using pink West whistles today in support of Lakin Ayers, who is the daughter of Roger Ayers. She's been diagnosed with cancer. She'll have surgery in April. She is surrounded by support here. I do have the pink whistle that the referees are wearing. Corey, she is a Virginia graduate, graduated in three years, so she's like family, you know? She absolutely is family. She graduated in three years, so her father could actually come back and officiate games at Virginia because he couldn't do it while she was there as an undergrad. But prayers out to Lakin. We know that you have a great support system around you, and the ACC family is praying for you. Absolutely. Our best to Lakin, and of course, one of the finest officials in all of college basketball is Roger Ayers. Miss layup by Edwards, lead 11 for the Deacons, and Appleby in fifth gear. Had it deflected, he was trying to hook pass in the corner to tee up Davian Williams. And so it'll stay at the wake end of the floor as you see Samir Torrance take a break, and Joe Girard comes back for Coach Behan. Important stretch right now for Syracuse. One, to be able to find a way to get some stops. Wake Forest has built some rhythm on the offensive end of the floor. And more importantly, to try to find a way to put some points on the board. Orange have gone six minutes without a field goal, Corey. Yeah, only one point from the free throw. So it's been a struggle for the Orange offensively during the second half. Wrap around the car. Tough shot, and he got the roll. And we started out the second half talking about the interior passes, and we've seen a number of nice ones, but Cam Hildreth may have had the nicest one of the game thus far with the left hand. Carr in double figures. He's got 10. Lead has jumped to 13. It's a 19 to 2 run that Mintz cuts into with a triple. Much needed bucket there by Judah Mintz to be able to knock down the three ball to get the lead back to 10. But Syracuse going to need some stops here soon. Coach Beheim going to that patented pressure. Here's Carr. He's going to fire a three. Nope. So a 10 point game it is, and Gerard and the Orange. There's Williams, a lob. With Edwards could not catch it on the back end. And I don't think Coach Bayham liked the pass selection there. But you love the passing from Wake Forest right now, moving the basketball around the perimeter. Clintman unable to knock that down, but still a great look. Well, there's a lot to like about Bobby Clintman, isn't there? Here's Mintz over the backboard and recovered underneath by Williams. 17 to shoot, ball never hit the rim. 
Edwards a little fake and score with the right hand. Pretty move by the big man, Jesse Edwards, who's got eight here this afternoon. And that's the second time we've seen that from Edwards, but he has to do it quick before the double team can get there. And a foul on the orange as Appleby attacks. Appleby, did he lose his shoe in that possession? Does look like he lost his yeah. shoe. And take, speaking of nice passes, Cam Hilder finding Andrew Carr under the basket. That left hand wrap around dying on that possession, putting it to where only his teammate can gather it and score it over top of the ACC's top shot block. Fourth foul on Jesse Edwards, by the way, Corey. Comes with 9.22 to play. It is the fifth on the orange. And Monir Hima, the freshman from Niger and a transfer from Duquesne. I say freshman, sophomore transfer, first year with the Orange. Hema waits at the table. Meanwhile, Mark Schnur is over, alternate official A.J. Desai. And they're going through something here on the monitor. Got to look at our guy Gary Strickland over there. Yep. Behind the possession arrow. There, there is. That is Gary Strickland, who is... Uh, a legend at the book, as they say, in these parts. Free throw by Appleby is good. Gary Strickland is the official score for the ACC. This is his 21st tournament. Longtime official scorekeeper at Wake Forest in Winston-Salem. Saturday night will be his 17th championship game, and then he'll work the first and second round here at the Coliseum in Greensboro next week and then shut it down. But our thanks to the long work of Gary Strickland. WD, early in my career, Gary Strickland walked up to me and he said, Corey, you said something that really ticked me off the other night. But I can't remember what it was. And when I think of it, I'm going to let you know. Well, here we are 15 years later, and I'm still waiting for Gary to tell me what I said. But he has been great to me yep. for the past 15 seasons, and I truly appreciate it. Ten-point lead for the Deacons. And here's a quick check of what we got coming up for you. And I would caution you to look at today, but also look at the carryover to tomorrow, right, Corey? Absolutely. Tomorrow, the double buys come in. Miami, Duke, Virginia, and Clemson. But there's going to be great basketball here at the Greensboro Coliseum this afternoon, this evening. And you've got some heavy hitters coming in. You think about the nice session alone with the Tar Heels and the Wolfpack. Right. It's going to be jumping here at Greensboro. Well, there is Josh Pastner. He's talking to Miami assistant Bill Courtney who is uh, taking in the ball game here today. The Canes, of course, are the top seed after the two-point victory against Pittsburgh, who plays next year in Greensboro against Pastor and the Jackets. Williams at two. Soft jump shot, and Benny Williams got a dozen in the ball game now. An eight-point game, and oftentimes Jim Beheim will use this pressure to see if they can get a couple turnovers and find a way to get some rhythm going just like this. And Judah Mintz with the easy opportunities finishing it off. Now you've got a six-point game. The pressure has worked thus far for the Orange. 13 now for Mintz. And the scoreboard here in the Coliseum is wrong. The scoreboard on our screen is correct. As Corey told you, it's a six-point game. But the scoreboard here in the Coliseum is incorrect. Well, they just gave the two points to Wake and compared to right. the Syracuse. Yeah. They got to fix the scoreboard. It's 58 right. to 52. Jim Beheim right now is letting them know this is wrong. Yep. And to get that correct. Yep. So a six-point game. And now they fixed it here in the building. Appleby straight away three. And Williamson will track it down for Clinton. Seven threes today for Syracuse, six for Wake Forest. Important possession right here for Syracuse to make sure they get a good look on the offensive end of the floor. No need to be in a rush. Copeland and baseline, the block on Appleby will be his first. And that is the seventh on the Deacons. Eighth now on the Deacons, Corey, with 8-12 to go. Always love looking at the sidelines, especially in moments like this. You get an opportunity to see Jim Beheim and Judah Mintz having a conversation, but also Jerry McNamara jumping up 
encouraging Judah Mintz. And of course, Judah Mintz has got the greatest education you can imagine, not only from Coach Beheim, but also Jerry McNamara yeah. and Adrian Archery, the two guards who played the point for Jim Beheim. They understand exactly what he's going through. Both these guys had an opportunity to be able to play the point guard position for Jim Beheim as freshmen. Yep. And both are incredible resources for not only Mets, but for those of us that cover these games. So is Alan Griffin, by the way. Yeah, I was about to say, I can't, I can't leave Alan out, yep. but a great play by Copeland right there to knock the basketball off of Appleby. And I believe Syracuse will maintain the yeah, they get sure possession did. back. Yep, they get it back. And that's just hustle right there. Knocks it down off Appleby. Out of bounds, Jim Beheim right on top of it. Four point game now, an opportunity to make it a one possession game for the Orange. Copeland playing like a boundary corner, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Raking it out of there. Hema on the floor to replace Edwards. Gerard spotting for three. Here they come, Corey. The press combined with a little backcourt pressure. And the foul will be in the backcourt on Copeland challenging the inbounds pass. And although you don't want to foul 94 feet away from the basket, Copeland is playing with the energy and effort necessary for Jim Behan. And Copeland also delivered the pass that allowed Gerard knocking down the three to make it a, a hand on only basketball on that possession. Knocks it off of Appleby, but the bench, the appreciation by his teammates and his coaches love that type of effort, especially when you're, you know, bailing all in 94 feet pressure and making plays like that. Tyree Appleby to the line where he's a perfect four for four, 13 points, nine assists today for Appleby. And the front end, good. The WD, you know, I'm not an analytics guy. Uh huh. But I would have to say that no one in the ACC has a higher usage rate. Then would be Tyree Apple. It would be he hard to touch. So much to wait for. And of course, any type of positive effects, victories they have, he plays a large part in each one of them. Yeah. I think that's where you mentioned the, the component of his impact. And that's where we spoke about the Monsanto loss earlier in the broadcast today from the perimeter perspective. That's where they've had to try and recover today with some other things as you see Williams tap follow and a foul on the Deeks. Now let me speak to this young man yep. who has been a complete roller coaster all season long for the Orange. We mentioned on Saturday he only played eight minutes in that game over two from the field. Right. But Benny Williams has been nothing short of spectacular this afternoon for the Orange and this is exactly the type of performance that Jim Beheim needed to see from him 14 and 10 15 and points 10 rebounds yeah. the double double for Benny Williams Corey, he was on ice in early February he wasn't playing period right no he was not he was not in good graces with coach Beheim but the patience of a man that's been in Syracuse for 47 years continuing to stick with Benny Williams and it has shown up here this afternoon here's Carr pivoting through the lane now Williamson looking for on alley three to shoot and Appleby in the corner Clinton three Ooh. that is the response that right in front of your own bench you gotta love that if you're Steve Ford Gerard trying to answer cannot Deacon lead is three on the triple by the Swedish freshman that's a little bit of a hero shot in my opinion again I think if you're Syracuse you could have got a better look than that one from Gerard and we got another tie up and boy, Williams and Davian Williamson came locked up. The ball's going to belong to the orange. Down three. And raring to go. Look at here now. Wait. Here come the Panthers. The five seed. Begrudgingly the five seed. I think the uh, I think the boys in the royal blue and yellow will be ready to ride, don't you? I do think they will be ready to go, but... I am not sleeping on the rambling wreck. <laughs> Four straight wins from Josh Pastor. He's seen magic in Greensboro before. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. Williamson a three. And the rebound to Copeland. Jackets have now won three straight in this building. You count the two-game win that got him the 21 crown, Corey. 
And then, of course, the win yesterday. Three straight here in the Coliseum. When you think about the fact that they trailed the majority of that game yeah. yesterday and end up winning it on a free throw. We talked about Jesse Edwards and his work. It's ball got knocked away. Hildreth stripped it out of there. Now another hell ball. That's going to go to Wake Forest. Four or five hell balls. I think five. We've had tied up today, including two in the first four possessions. And give Cam Hildreth a lot of credit for the way that he has defended Joe Girard throughout this game. Beating him to the spot, cutting him off there. And again, once, I love the great point about the fact that there was no call on mm, that play. Right. Three-point game. You Please. see the look. Joe Girard knows. I think I Trey mean, pointed that out earlier, but she recognizes defense before me, so maybe that's Every time. Every time she does. <laughs> And it would be appropriate that she does. Here's Williamson. Well, Clintman's been the story here today, and stripped by Copeland, and a foul on Clintman, and that's going to be his fourth. Don't forget, we got you covered on Selection Sunday. All starts at high noon on ESPN College Football, uh, College Basketball Live to prep the day. Six o'clock now. Reese and the guys look at the men's field of 68. Brackets are announced. Bracketology with breakdowns of each region. And at 8 o'clock, the ladies take over. Field of 68 revealed. Continuing coverage on ESPNU at 9 and at 10 Eastern. Even more coverage of both brackets. Everything also streaming live, Dre, on the ESPN app. Just in case you guys want to tune in, I'll be there. Selfless, shameless promo here at the 8 o'clock. Well, you're working with Corey, so it's okay. Yeah. I think he's rubbing off on me a little bit. <laughs> hey, Dre, just so you know. That's not just a good thing, it's a great thing. Yeah, it is. And speaking of a great thing, Vladimir Copeland has been a great thing for Syracuse here in this second half. His energy, his effort, stepping up to the free throw line, knocking down the two free throws, and he's given Jim Beheim everything they could have asked for coming off the bench. He's got six points all at the free throw line and five rebounds today. You gotta have some guys do the dirty work. If you're gonna advance here. Especially in a tight game, and we've got a good one. One point, here's Hildreth. Wake Forest looking for something in the lane, and the sophomore from Worthing in West Sussex of England has speaking, got his eighth point. Speaking of little things, he's been the guy doing all the little things for Wake Forest. His Edward is able to get the easy bucket. Joe Girard wanting Hildreth to get called for the flop on that possession. But there was contact. He absolutely got hit by a screen. There's no flopping on that. Wake fans wanted the charge. <laughs> Gerard wants a flop. Wake fans want charges. Here's Carr trying to get away from the double team. Hildreth, foul line area to Carr. Williamson, four to shoot. Hildreth. Ten for Hildreth. Hildreth has one of the three triple doubles in ACC basketball this year, but he's showing his versatility. It hadn't even been about his offense today. It's been about his defense, but he's thrown in a couple big buckets on the last couple possessions. Boy, sure has. Catch by Edwards in the quick turn, but that's it. When he catches it, turns over that left shoulder before the track can even get there, there's zero Wake Forest can do about it. 12 points for Jesse Edwards. He's five of eight from the floor, and he's got eight rebounds, but he's playing with four as we work toward four minutes. Williamson. Here is Appleby. Trying to find that crease in the zone. There's the flash for Carr. Hilders had the hot hand. And he scoops and gets two more. Wow. Cameron Hildreth now starting to carry Forbes' team. 13 for Hildreth. And a 7-0 run for Hildreth as well. And an answer for the Orange. Wow. Judah Mintz. That's the second time Judah Mintz has stepped up and made a big three when his team was behind. One to one gets him back to one point. You go to Hildreth there, Corey. How about Williamson? Appleby back for Davian Williamson. Rebound picked up. Williams at the foul line. If you're Syracuse right now, this is a time to get the basketball in the hands of Jesse Edwards. Allow him to be able to operate through the post, get something open for one of his teammates. Next dead ball is going to give him a timeout. See if the Orange can grab the lead before the break. 
Gerard to work. Flash thrown away. Williams tried to feed it to Copeland. Here's Williams to the head with Williams, and Damian lays it in. Wake Forest building the lead. That one was because of the long pass ahead. However, it's been great offensive possessions for the Demon Deacons. Everyone touching the basketball, sharing the sugar, as my man, the notorious D.O.B., would say. And it ends up with a beautiful find from Cam Hill. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by New York Life. 12,000 agents there to help you go through life's happiest and most difficult times. And we welcome you back to the Greensboro Coliseum with Corey Alexander, Andrea Carter, Wes Durham, Kim Belton, our producer, Adam Bryant, our director. Wonderful college basketball crew here today for you. And we're grateful to be courtside watching Syracuse and Wake Forest in their second meeting all time at the ACC tournament. Three-point lead for the Deacons. Orange with the ball and Mintz on the attack. What a scoop. Thought he had a chance to get it to go down. Carr in the full scramble mode on the floor on a knee. Ted Valentine the whistle. And Andrew Carr got a timeout called in that mess. And, and right, rightfully so, because one of the things that we've seen on the last couple of offensive possessions for Syracuse they haven't gotten the looks that I think that they would want. Wake Forest has been executing much better on the offensive end over these last couple possessions after Syracuse got it to one point per game. And you see Judah Mintz attacking the basket. But at this point, this, has, this ball has to go to a shooter in the corner. That is a tough shot to try to take, especially over a guy with 6'10", trying to block your shot. And Mintz unable to really get any lift on that shot. Keep your dribble alive and kick it to the corner if you've got a guy there. So now with 2.24 to go. Remember the timeout was awarded to Wake Forest. Deacons are out of them, Corey. Orange have one to go the rest of the way. And Steve Forbes, Wake Forest. And you, unless you went back and looked at this, this is a hard number to believe. Wake has lost six straight games at the ACC tournament. Nine of their last 10, 16 of their last 18, Corey, at this event. Well, and it's hard to fathom, especially when you consider that the tournaments that are played here in Greensboro would have been quite a few of those if you go back to the last 16 events. Wake Forest is the closest school of proximity to this arena. Yeah. And so when you would think that you have a great following, but one of the issues for the Demon Deacons, spring break normally falls during the same week as ACC tournament. Yeah. They don't have as many of their students here supporting. Wake Forest, by the way, has seen Syracuse win two straight in the series, six of the last seven. And the Deacons would be looking for just their third win in series history over Syracuse. And meanwhile, their third-year head coach, the very personable Steve Forbes, Trying to get the Deacons to a game tomorrow against the top seed Miami out of the nine seed. Appleby attacks. Oh, the looper fell off the line and recovered inside by Edwards. But regardless, it was still a good look for Wake Forest. Now we have to see, can Syracuse execute and get what they want on this offensive possession? Drive and a score. And that's Judah Mintz again attacking. And the answer is yes, but it's a Judah Mintz playing off two feet in the painted area, taking a shot that he's comfortable with. 18 for Mintz on his seventh field goal. He's got six assists today. Appleby has got 11 assists, 15 points today for the Deacons. Right now, if you're Wake Forest, you want this guy having the ball in his hands or Appleby. Kelvin yeah. Hildreth has been able to find his teammates, and of course, Appleby with four seconds remaining is trustworthy. Fall away three. Banged around, rattles out for Edwards. Gives Syracuse a lot of credit for the defensive stop on that possession, forcing a tough shot for Appleby at the end of the shot clock. You change anything here, Corey? Nope. We're going to go Judah Mintz, getting the ball inside to Jesse Edwards. We want those two guys playing two man game. Danny Williams instead punches the orange to the front with the triple. Or that. <laughs> orange in front, two, under a minute. Wakes out of timeouts.
10 on the shot clock. Hildreth weaving through, spins and scores. What a shot. I'm still trying to figure out how he could tour to his body to get that shot off. So awkward that Jesse Edwards, the leading shot blocker in AGC, couldn't even jump. Tied at 74, and a Jim Beheim timeout. We got about a six-second differential shot clock to game clock. That's the whirling dervish. I need to see this shot in slow motion. Jumps, does a 360, just completely throws Jesse Edwards off balance. Jesse Edwards looks back at his bench like, wait a minute, did that just happen? Everyone in utter disbelief on the Wake Forest bench that Cameron Hildreth just did that and crunch time to tie the game at 74. Unbelievable. What a second half for Cameron Hildreth to tie it at 74. Steve Forbes, who has been on the roller coaster this year, and then Jim Beheim. Let's play zone. Mm. And look how calm the huddle is, Corey. Well, I mean, again, 47 years on the sideline. He's been at Syracuse, I believe, for 62 years. So when you think about that, I mean, there's nothing that this man has not seen on the basketball court. Well, maybe he hasn't seen the 360 to tie the game. <laughs> the camera, he'll just, just made that shot, but it's very little Jim Beheim hasn't seen at this point. All right, so now we talked about it a moment ago. You said Mintz and Edwards and Benny Williams threw in the three. And then Cam Hildreth went with this. Well, again, not only the finish, but the nice move. That's sports center top player today. I, I don't care what else happens today. Okay. To do this, down two. Yeah. To tie the basketball game. Cam Hildreth should find himself on Sports Center tonight. Top play. Wake Forest is out of timeouts. Important to remember, we got a six-second differential and a tie game. 22 to shoot for the Orange. And whatever you do, if you're Syracuse, you do not want to rush any opportunity. Get the basketball into the hands of Judah Mintz and get something late in the shot clock, preferably going to the rim. Benny Williams working against Clintman. Now here's Gerard, five to shoot against Williamson. Fall away three is short. Williamson runs the rebound. Here's Appleby, four, three, back for Williamson for the win. Williamson pumps in a three with two tenths left. Winston Salem's own Davian Williamson playing close to home did not want to see his ACC career end here tonight. Not a great shot for Syracuse. Tyree Appleby with patience finds his running mate. Davian Williamson who calmly steps up and knocks down the game winner for the Demon Deacons. Five tenths of a second. So three tenths put back on the clock. So with five tenths, more than enough time to catch and shoot, but it's gonna have to be quick. Judah Mintz has ripped his jersey. Into the ball game will come Chris Bell. Point five, you have enough time to be able to catch and shoot, but it's gonna have to leave your hands quickly. Gonna have to be a long pass. Williams will throw, and Wake Forest wins. Davian Williamson, who knew about Steve Ford's vision when he played for him at East Tennessee State, wanted in on a chance to come to his hometown and play for Forbes at Wake Forest, now has carried Forbes to his first 